Hello, we are going to do a proof of a theorem that says that if a transversal intersects two parallel lines, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Um, and in our book, it's theorem 3.1, um, but you can just consider it sort of the alternate interior angles theorem. Um, we're given that that we have some parallel lines, and we want to prove that these two angles that we have here, which are, all, which are uh, alternate interior angles, we want to prove that they are congruent, right? And if we can prove that those two angles are congruent, and as long as while we do this, we only use facts that will always be true for any pair of alternate interior angles, then that means that any theoretical pair of alternate interior angles will be congruent. Um, so our first step is always the given. Um, line A is parallel to line B, and of course, the reason for that is that it is given, right? Um, <clears throat> so now, as we go to step two, we have to think of what are some things we know that are always true when we have parallel lines, and of course, we can kind of reference this drawing. And we know that there's not just interior, al alternate interior angles. We know there's other pairs of angles as well. For example, angle one and angle four um, here. I don't know what happened to angle two, but it doesn't matter. Don't need it. Angles one and four are corresponding angles. And we know that corresponding angles um, that are formed by a transversal crossing parallel lines, we know that the, those corresponding angles are going to be congruent. Um, and that's a postulate. It's a fact that follows from the nature of parallel lines. So um, we can say that angle one is congruent to angle four, okay? And our justification for that can simply be, you know, in our book it's postulate three one, so you can list that. Or you can just say corresponding um, angles, um, and, and that's fine, just plain corresponding angles, or you can say corresponding angles are congruent, you know, you can say when they're formed by parallel lines. If you, you can write however much you want, but really just, you can just say corresponding angles, um, and that's good enough for me. Um, we also have another relationship between angle 3 and 4. Um, those angles are vertical, and we know that vertical angles are congruent. So angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and that was theorem 3, 1, but we can just say vertical um, angles. And again, that's good enough. If you want to add that it's the vertical angles theorem, or say that... Um, Vertical angles are congruent, you know, anywhere along that line is fine, as long as you justify that you're talking about vertical angles. Um, that's a theorem we proved previously, so we can just use that. Um, now, we see that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and so that means that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. All, th all three of those angles are congruent all to each other. Um, and that, of course, is the transitive property of congruence. Okay? And there you have it. Pretty simple four-step proof. Um, there are three other proofs of the, um, of the other kind of angles that um, are formed <clears throat> by a transversal, like alternate um, exterior, as well as same side interior and same side exterior. Um, and this proof is a lot like them, um, but hopefully you can use this example as a, uh, to help you get started on those ones. All right?